Hey, so I hear you're planning a trip to Disney's Galaxy's Edge for the very first time, either at Disneyland or Disney World. Let me just say, I wanna make sure that you and your guests have as much fun as possible, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. So let me help you with my top 10 tips. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel. My name is David, and this is my space on the internet where I get to share my Star Wars fandom. And I am a huge fan of Disney. I'm a former cast member, and I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. So hit like, sub, and follow if you're a fan as well. Hey, before I get into the top 10 tips, let me give you kind of like a, a bonus tip, and that is make sure you see uh, Galaxy's Edge in the daytime and the evening. So let's say you've got a uh, time slot to come back to ride Rise of the Resistance and it's in the evening. Don't plan your entire Galaxy's Edge trip for the evening only. Make sure you get a chance to see it in the daytime and the nighttime. It looks completely different. All right, so let's get into the top 10 tips. Make sure you play with the Star Wars universe by using the data pad on the Play Disney Parks mobile app. So you should have the Play Disney Parks mobile app installed on your cell phone and any cell phones of uh, the little ones in your party. And there is a data pad on there. And with that, you'll be able to do a lot of things that are fun and free. You'll be able to translate a variety of languages, including the language uh, Arabesh that's uh, scattered around the park. You'll be able to scan objects to see uh, different spaceships or uh, things move or animate. You'll be able to tune in and decrypt communications, and you'll be able to hack into select devices, control panels, and droids. All right, number nine. My number nine might be a little controversial, but if this is your very first trip to Galaxy's Edge, you've never been in before, don't buy a lightsaber or a droid from the Droid Depot on your first trip. And the only reason why I say that is uh, a lightsaber costs $220 and one of the droids costs about $120. And let me just say, while those things are fun, maybe it might be better for you to spend more time exploring Galaxy's Edge and walking around and taking all the sights and sounds in. Like I said, both of those experiences take about 30 to 45 minutes, and at the end of the day, it might only be one or two people in your party that are actually doing the activity while everybody else has to wait. And certainly while you walk around the park, you'll see other people that are carrying the lightsabers and the droids. And that's the other part, is that once you build it, you have to carry it around the park. So maybe kind of scout it out, look at it, and then talk about it for your next trip. That's just, that's just my two cents. All right, so instead of building a lightsaber or doing the droid depot, my tip number eight is instead play the Batu Bounty Hunters game. It's free. It's a fun scavenger hunt that you can play on anybody's phone. Your uh, player only needs to have a Magic Band Plus and the aforementioned My Disney Experience app. So you wanna head over to the bounty board in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It's located between Droid Depot and the Market. And be sure to have the Play Disney Parks app open and then select Batu Bounty Hunters Game. You're gonna tap your band on the lower left touch point to begin. And your first bounty will have a special intro explaining the game and how to get started. And then you'll receive a picture of that creature. And then it enters the scavenger hunt part of the game where you are seeking out these bounties to earn credits. All right, number seven, don't be afraid to dress up. I think once you're walking around Galaxy's Edge, you're gonna notice a lot of people, especially kids, that have dressed up as Star Wars characters to play in the park. Now, adults dress up too. So I would just say, don't be afraid to cosplay. If you're the kind of person that likes to dress up to get into character, Galaxy's Edge can be a really fun place to do that. Even if you're just wearing a Star Wars themed shirt or you've done your hair a certain way or you've got one of those extendable lightsabers on your belt. I think the more you interact with the environment, the more fun you will have. And that leads me to my number six, interact with the characters. The characters in Galaxy's Edge Walk around where you can interact with them. Don't be afraid to walk up to them and speak to them. They talk back. They get close on purpose, and it can be a lot of fun. Make sure somebody in your party has their camera out 
and you'll be able to make a really cool memory. All right, number five, to eat, because we always have to eat, right? Eating is important. Uh, use your mobile order app to order food from either Ronto Roasters or Docking Bay 7, food and cargo. These are the two places that you want to eat. Um, Ronto Roasters is a restaurant that you can walk up to. Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo is a sit-down restaurant. Now, Ronto Roasters is a walk-up. You could easily get in line, order some food, and then walk around. And if you're gonna do that, I would add, make sure you get a glass of blue milk. You wanna make sure that you get the blue milk while you're there. But that's a good place to eat, and Docking Bay 7 is also good. Like I said, that one's a sit-down. Um, it can be pretty packed. That's where a lot of people like to eat. But I think of the places to eat in Galaxy's Edge, that's where you want to go. My number four is don't eat or visit Oga's Cantina. I know you think that the cantina is going to be a great experience, but it really isn't. Um, it's neat on the inside. There's lots of cool stuff to look at, but you can look at it just by asking a cast member if you can walk in real quick and look around. They will let you do that. But let me just say, there's nothing to eat there. It's all uh, just small, weird hors d'oeuvres, and it's not filling. And they are either going to sit you at a bar where you have to stand or a table where you will share it with other people. So if you're a party of like two, three, or four, you'll sit at a table with other people. And it's just a very weird experience. They're trying to get as many people in there as they can. And so you, you really don't have a nice, quiet or private experience, you're, you're sharing it with other people. Now, if you're really social and you don't mind doing that, then fine. But I thought that Oga's Cantina was kind of a bust. Uh, for merchandise, my number three, explore the Black Spire Outpost Marketplace for souvenirs. It's, a, it's the street and you go up and down it. Every store has got something different. Make sure you go into all the stores uh, to see what kind of things you might like, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. But then don't forget Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities that's on the other side of Galaxy's Edge, but it is their bigger store. And there's stuff in that store as well that you won't find in the other stores. So make sure you go in both. I missed Doc Ondar's on my first visit. Okay, the rides, that's what we wanna do, right? So for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, I would just do the single rider. I think that's the easiest way to go. Um, I know your whole party might want to stay together, but if between the two rides, I think the Falcon Smuggler's Run, you, you can just do single rider. All you're doing is standing in line together and, and your party will be together. And who knows, you might end up uh, ending up with one of your party members anyway. But between the two rides, because they're both really long rides and a very long uh, time that that'll suck up, I think between the two, do single rider for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. It'll save you some time. And then number one, ride Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, no matter what. No matter what, this is the ride to experience in the entire park. There is nothing else like this. And for the Star Wars fan, I don't care if you're not as much of a bigger fan of the later films, you will still love this. It is a ton of fun and certainly not to be missed. All right, so those are my top 10 tips. And the great thing about the internet is now it's your turn. You can share your top 10 tips or just a single tip down below in the comment section. Uh, if you know something or you have a secret, maybe you'd like to share to a first time visitor to Galaxy's Edge, post that below and I will see you next time. May the force be with you.